tonight, blown away. So I was praying to God, just saying, look, if you're going to take the house, take the house, but just save me. A killer storm sweeps a man to his death and cuts a path of destruction through the southeast. The strength of a cyclone, the torrents of a flood, the fiercest storm in a generation leaves thousands devastated in its wake. By lunchtime today, 4,000 people had lodged insurance claims, all of them living in that great swathe of destruction that cut through here and ended at the Bigby's mansion near the Capera bushland, just one of 500 homes that have been hit. You'd swear we were looking at America's tornado alley, not one of Brisbane's better hillsides, where pieces of mansion are littered across the bush, a roof flung 700 metres down the mountain. The power went out, and for more than 40,000 South East Queenslanders, it still hasn't come back on. This would have to be one of the most severe storms when it comes to the terms of electricity network. Nearly 230,000 homes and businesses were blacked out. Energex says it's the worst storm it's had to cope with in more than two decades. Good evening. A series of severe storms have lashed the southeast, destroying property and dumping large amounts of rain. Damage was reported from Brisbane through to the Gold Coast hinterland. 70,000 households are blacked out tonight. Energex is pleading for patience, saying it could take some time to return power. Our newsroom here at Channel 7 was hit hard and has been badly damaged by flooding. Millions of volts of electricity unleashed on Brisbane. Clouds fuelled by heat and humidity rolled into the southeast from across the New South Wales border. So much power, so much rain. It lashed the southeast. Daylight turned into darkness. The city skyline framed by nature's fury. Mount Cutha bore the full force. The storm tore a hole in the Channel 7 roof. Water flooded in, destroying offices and equipment. The roof continued to cave in. The storm hit the Gold Coast hinterland first, unleashing its fury on Tambourine Mountain. There's trees down all over the place along here. The mountain just got flogged. Lightning splintered trees. Roads were cut, power lines down. If you can just find somewhere safe, there's apparently there's another storm about to hit as well. Locals here had no warning of the storm that was about to hit. Within minutes, golf ball size hail was raining down. And it went black. And yeah, and then it just poured down. It was heavy wind. As the storm moved north, a thick blanket of fog moved in, trapping tourists and locals. More storms are expected tomorrow. Bianca Stone, 7 News. G'day folks, this is Ciro. Today I want to take you all the way back to the 16th of November 2008. I'm talking about the devastating gap storm at Brisbane. I've been intensively researching this storm and I discovered very quickly that this was a Frankenstorm made by the mad scientist, funded by Queensland Premier at the time, Captain Anna Bly. Before I go forwards, I must go back further. Things were looking grim for Queensland. Real grim. We are in the midst of the worst drought in recorded history. Dams were empty, livestock were dying, and crops were failing. Far-fetched plans were being set up and funded at enormous cost to taxpayers. All cards were on the table. Recycled water plants were being constructed and pipelines to carry the recycled effluent were being constructed to be delivered to the people. Toowoomba was at a heightened risk of running out of water, with water being trucked in daily. They were going to be the happy consumers of all that recycled effluent. They really weren't too happy about it. Desalination plants were constructed at Chugan, and it was riddled with issues from day one, like rust due to faulty stainless steel, to pump failures, and tape problems. Then there was this crazy idea of damming Traveston Crossing on the Sunshine Coast, where the average depth would have only been six metres deep. Can you imagine the evaporation rate on a dam that shallow in the hot Queensland sun? It would be just unbelievable. And, and the risk to endangered species, turtles, all sorts of endangered animals were there that Anna Bly didn't, didn't care less about. The government 
disrupted hundreds of innocent people by compulsory acquisition of land. But luckily that dam was scrapped after the 2011 floods and did not proceed. During that time, cloud seeding, geoengineering and weather modification were full steam ahead, operating 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Some of the key players were of course the government body, the EPA. That's the Environmental Protection Authority. The King of Thailand, he perfected rainmaking technology over 30 years. It has been tried and tested. Anna Bly did a deal with this king, the King of Thailand, and she was given the green light to utilise this technology here in Queensland. It proved to be a massive, overwhelming success. It worked better, way better than anybody could have ever imagined. The reason this technology worked so well in Queensland was due to our climate and geology being very similar to that in Thailand. As a result, Queensland was the first major region outside of Thailand where rainmaking technology was put into full effect. Their technique largely relied on cloud seeding using silver iodide and a whole chemist shelf of other chemicals to promote the formation of water droplets within the cloud formation. The chemical cloud seeding in turn created clouds with different, differing temperatures at different altitudes. There are several stages to this process with sodium chloride as a final stage to trigger the rain. When used with technology from Harp, Jorn, Doppler, directional microwaves, it all helps set the perfect condition for a perfect man-made storm. These technologies were utilised to their full potential during the following cyclone season. The less talked about tropical cyclone Anthony delivered the sucker punch to southeast Queensland. That geo-engineered bad boy, he turned into a tropical depression and sat stationary over Toowoomba and Wyvernhoe region over the catchment areas for a period of several hours. Where at the peak, the dams were rising at a whopping 5% an hour. That in turn caused a freak flood at Toowoomba into Grantham, where tragically all those souls were lost. Then Yazi hit. You have to keep in mind these organisations, government agencies, they've been practising manipulating and controlling the weather for a very, very long time. When you practise, 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 you become very good at what you do. The United, United States is not ashamed of this fact and they openly admit that they will own the weather by 2025 as a force multiplier. Let me ask you this. Has this already happened? Now, I'd like you to show you the historic radars from the gap storm of 2008 and how I see it being manip manipulated and controlled. As you can see, there are multiple anoprops or APs and that means anomalous propagation and that includes electromagnetic wave propagation that are not encountered in a standard atmosphere due to a non-standard distribution of temperature and humidity with height in the atmosphere. It is not caused by ground clutter, ocean reflection, biological returns from birds, insects, debris, chaff, sandstorms, volcanic eruption plumes and other non-precipitational meteorological phenomena. That said, I will let the radars roll. The one on the left is the 256 kilometer. The one on the right is the 64 kilometer. Keep an eye out for these APs and you too can see their electromagnetics at work.